So hello, my name's Rob, and this is Cattle Rabbit Scout Model Studios. Firstly, let me wish you all a very happy new year. And in this video, we're going to be looking at Alruk the Drowner for the Nighthaunt faction in Warhammer Age of Sigma. This is a really fantastic model. Um, I've wanted this for a while now, and I was lucky enough to be gifted this by my good friend Beaver Benton as a Christmas present. So if you're watching, and I sincerely hope you are, I love you, mate. Thank you for the awesome gift. Um, but what I'm going to do in this video is a little bit of unboxing and I'm going to show you how I painted up the base and the swirling spirit things that surround him. So, Alruk the Drowner. Now, I know very little about the Nighthaunt faction. Um, I'm probably not even saying his name right. I've been calling him Al for short. Um, but he does come with an 80 mil base and you get three of the sprues with obviously the uh, kind of mixed uh, slices that GW do to save space, which obviously I was quite a fan of. Um, this section comes with his boat hull, and then he's got the rest of it, Alric himself. You've got some of the base here, and you've got the little graves and things like that that go on the, the sculpted base. Uh, with the instructions, now, one thing I did notice about Alruk, that maybe if you are a newer player or a younger player and maybe you don't have a lot of experience, there seems to be quite a few little fiddly parts. So I would recommend that if you don't have a lot of experience with um, the smaller fragile miniatures, it's probably get someone to help you or an adult if you are one of the younger hobbyists out there. But this is a great kit and you really do get a lot of bang for your buck in this one. Um, I love how he just sails around hitting people with an oar. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Um, but I like these kits because they're like little dioramas and you can really have a lot of fun with them. So the base. Obviously being Nighthaunt, it's a no-brainer that it should be from the realm of Shaiish, which is the realm of the dead. So I had some big plans for this. Um, one thing I really, really like to do when I, I do these little kind of one-off models is I get a few little odd bits that I've got lying around. So like here, um, I had some pieces left over from a Shattered Dominion basing kit. There was a gargoyle left over from the Sigmarite Mausoleum, an odd grave that I found, which I have no idea where I got it from. And what I like to do is just kind of cut out the, the base sections and start to have a play around and get almost get like a little bit of a composition. Um, I think this is a really, really good way of just kind of working out your spacing and, and what, you know, the, the feel and the vibe you want from your base. So as you can see here, I'm just playing around with it and I think I've got something down. However, I then did realize that Alruk does have a lot of bits uh, kind of swirling around him. So one thing I was quite conscious to do is make sure that anything I was putting on the base extra didn't interfere with the model itself. So what I decided to do at this point was actually cut out the rest of Alruk, put them in sub-assemblies and then work out where I could put things and I had to really let the model dictate to me where I was going to put things. So as you can see here this is what I ended up with. All I've done is I've glued a few bits on, I had some skulls left over that I took off of an old project because weight's not want not and I was able to dry fit him into his position. As you can see here the spirit kind of leans against the grave which is something that I was quite conscious of doing um, just purely because he's on some some fairly thin supports so it actually give a bit more stability to the miniature itself. Once I was happy with how everything looked uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to base it the same way I base my studio bases and I will link it in the video in the top right corner now so do check that one out it's really really easy to do and gives a really really good effect. I will show you obviously the stages here this is when I put the uh, fine buff from Woodland Scenics on um, it's just a great scale sand. Um, it scales really, really well with 28mm wargaming. It's quite believable. And then I prime the whole thing black. Then, in principle, obviously following the video, if you don't want to check that out, I will leave all the colours in the description below. Uh, I just worked my way down from Eshing Grey all the way through to Administratum Grey with dry brushes. I blocked in the dirt colour in Rhinox Hide and it got a wash of Agrax Urshade. I painted in all the skulls. Um, nothing changes uh, kind of in my methods and then I've covered skulls so many times in my videos uh, I'm not going to do it again but if you do want to know just put it in the comments below and I'll, I'll pin it to the top or something I put in a little bit of brass on the graves for some 
extra effect, but that was really it. It was just a lot of dry brush work, um, good fun. Now, Pro Acryl, this is a fantastic paint. I got given a, set, a base set of these from Monument Hobbies um, towards the end of last year um, from my good friend Josh at Free Spice Gaming Group. Um, we got to try them out and they were just really, really exceptional paints. But they gave me this lovely purple and this fantastic magenta. And what better than a color that doesn't actually exist? You know, so let's go shyish on this. Now, to do this effect or what I'm gonna do, because in my head I wanted lots of little purples and things like that, just to help sell that kind of, I guess, realm of the dead kind of vibe. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a wet palette. If you don't have a wet palette, um, don't worry, you can do this on just a normal palette. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna squeeze out a little bit of my paints each time. And if you don't have Pro Acryl, uh, I'll list some alternatives once again in the description below. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna really heavily water them down to the point of it's, as you can see here, the paint's pulling back on itself as I pull it forward. What I've done here is I've made a glaze. Um, this is great because what it's gonna do, it's just gonna tint some of the colors that we want. And what I'm gonna do is working towards myself. And the reason why I do this is because the paint will accumulate on the last point the brush touches. So I can actually get um, a bit of a, the glaze to do a lot of the work for me because it will actually dry thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top. And what I'm gonna do is anything that's on a slant, almost like it's been pulled into the ground, I'm just gonna add this purple glaze over everything. I'm just gonna work my way around the miniature. This was actually a lot of fun this stage. Um, this isn't my usual style, but I had a hell of a lot of fun doing it. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same with the magenta, but I'm gonna do it in a little stippling motion just towards the bottom of each of the purple sections that I've completed just to kind of really brighten it up and draw your eye to those greys and give it that really ethereal kind of look. And that's what we're left with. I added a little fern, some dry brush and a green. Uh, if you want to see more pictures of this, head over to my Instagram, I'll leave links below, um, but you'll see more of this at the end. So uh, that was it for the base. Um, really, really easy to do and it comes together really quickly. Now the swirling spirits that Alrak has surrounding him. Uh, this was actually a really, really fun part to do. Um, he's got quite a few of these on the miniature. Um, you can see here why I did add some green to the base as I'm gonna do, go for nice green, bright green spirits. Uh, and it, I wanted it to look like it was kind of tainting the ground as it came out of it. But the first thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna touch it to a base. This is just so I can pop it in a hobby handle. I don't have to keep handling the piece. It makes it a bit easier to work with. Now he's attached. Um, all you really need for this step is a, it's a half decent brush. Now I've taken a liking to using these. These are lip gloss brushes. Um, they soak up paint really, really well. I think this was for three pound for a set of three from Primark in the UK. Really, really cool brushes. You don't need anything expensive you know, you can work wonders with this. And the colors we're gonna use for this effect are Contrast Warp Lightning, uh, X-Ray Flame, this is a technical paint, and then Tesseract Glow, once again, another technical paint. Uh, they say technical, but really I've always treated these like washes. So one thing um, these paints do very well together is mix. Um, I will link my Poxwalker skin video uh, up in the corner now but what I am going to do is I'm going to divide it into thirds and I'm just going to work my way up the miniature of each one. The principle is the same as the Poxwalker video once again which you know, I will leave in the corner um, but all I'm going to do is paint on my section start with my next color and then I'm going to agitate the paint together and mix it all in. So what I would recommend doing is get all your paints open give them all a really really good shake and just work out how far you want to go up the model then just go that little bit further because you need room to mix. As you can see here, like I'm using the Hexray Flame and then onto Tesseract Glow, I'm constantly just pulling the color into each other. Um, don't worry about working back down the miniature. You know, this stays wet for ages and it gives you a lot of working times. Obviously I sped it up because it would be quite a long video. But as you can see, this is what we are left with. Now my camera is having a bit of a hard time picking up the spirits, but as you can see, it's got that great kind of spooky, ethereal color to it. 
which to me just really, really lends itself to the night horn. Um, you'll be able to see here now everything's kind of dry. Um, I did have to leave this for a long while, obviously, using shade paints and contrast, which do take a little bit longer. So just you know, pop it down for 20 minutes and just check that it's not pouring. Now, what I wanted to do is some highlights. You don't have to do this stage, but I just thought it would help bring the miniature to life. For this, I'm going to use Pro Acryl Titanium White and Citadel Moot Green. If you don't have the Pro Acryl White Scar or um, Corax White, work absolutely fine. And a similar type of method to how we did the um, purples and the magenta in the last section. I've got a bit of white on my palette. And then instead of using what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of green next to it and I'm just going to start mixing it together. What I'm going for here is I guess a really very light lime green colour, almost like an off-white, like a tinted white with a touch of green. Um, other colours you could probably use, something like Dawn Yellow. Um, I wasn't brave enough to go full white, but you probably could. Uh, and then all I'm going to do is just round his sharpest bits things like the ridges of his nose, his eye sockets, his mouth, cheekbones, and kind of the upper parts of the spirit. I'm just going to add the, the white to the gray sections and the end of the ethereal smoke. I did make a point of not going any further than the halfway mark, but I just took my time and worked my way around the model. And then this is what we were left with. As you can see, it gives a really, really good effect. I think the, especially the Tesseract glow right at the front with the, the kind of deep green um, in the recesses, it just really sells the whole kind of spooky, ghostly vibe, which I really, really wanted to go for in this video. Um, I'm gonna complete the other sections uh, exactly the same uh, on Alruk or good old Al the Drowner. And um, what I will do is I'll do a part two um, I will also look out for a poll on my community page. Uh, I'll put up some bits like the bolt hole. You guys can bolt what you want to see next. I'm not going to do a whole video, um, but that's it for this one. Uh, I did hope you enjoy it. I do apologize. I've got a bit of a chest infection at the moment, so I've had to do quite a few takes for this video. Um, but yeah, that's it from me in this one. Uh, God bless, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.